working and working and saving, you could be owning that property with no deposit. You heard it here first. Money, 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 money. Money. Welcome to another session with Equia Dimples. This is getting a little bit crazier and crazier every day, isn't it? I want to talk to you about how I became a homeowner at the age of 25 and still single. According to statistics, the average age to own a home in the UK is 30 years. So for me, I feel like I've achieved something in life, you know? Something small, but I've still achieved something. Not because I'm privileged, not because my daddy owns a mansion and my daddy bought me a property and my daddy helps me with money. I grew up with a single mother. We lived in a council flat. I have a very hard working mom. She's superwoman. Superwoman, raising four children, working about five jobs at a time. That's what you call a role model. My dad wasn't around, nowhere to be found. For me personally, it's a privilege because it gave me the desire to succeed. Oh, I had a dream. Don't let me go with Martin Luther on you. But right from a very young age, I was striving, striving to become a homeowner. Fast track, when I came back from university first year, I realized a few things. I got a taste of living on my own. I got a taste of being able to sleep naked. I need my own space. So my mum, who has already helped me to apply for council flat at a very young age, because we needed the space, said, call the council, see what they're saying. Having my own council property is a blessing and it was a curse. You're paying your own rent, you're paying council tax, and let's talk about food. Food is expensive. Oh my goodness. There's nothing better than eating a delicious mouth-watering meal you didn't have to pay for. Tip number one, if you can live in your parents' house for as long as possible, do it. Take advantage. Eat that food. It will help you save money in the long run. I believe that we have the free will to be able to steer into our own direction. Don't steer into the cursed lane the right way and it will be a blessing. I had to always budget and rebudget and budget and rebudget until I knew I had enough being set aside for savings. And this whole time I was still studying so the only way I was saving was through having a part-time job as well and also student loan. Student loan has the ultimate ability to get people so excited excited is not even the word overexcited overexcited is not even the word it makes people live dreams <laughs> makes people think they are ballers broke ballers that's what they are because they start buying cars they start buying designer wear they start doing all sorts each to their own that's their choice but my choice whilst everybody else was balling i sat in lectures calculating my finances i mean i remember one lesson i was sat there with my pen and paper looking like i was listening to that man talking about statistics and research methods oh i'm back i was busy doing the maths not the kind of psychological maths but i'm talking about my financial maths the girl next to me who was a new friend said hey what are you doing told her what i was doing I think by my calculations, I am going to be a homeowner right after this four-year degree we're doing. Her reaction? We shall see. That's not possible. If you have such devils, oh sorry, I meant friends in your life, one word. Bye Felicia! Actually, that was two words. Hashtag bye Felicia, hashtags are one word. You know what I mean. That kind of negative energy is going to set you back in life. I could have ripped up that paper and thought, actually, maybe it's not possible. But no, I'm going to aim so high. The next time this girl sees me after university, she's going to think, damn, girl, you're my inspiration. So I began to research. If you've got a goal without research, you're just a window shopper. Window shoppers have goals. They have stuff that they want to achieve, things they want, blah, 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 blah. The list is endless. But if you don't have clear steps through research, Man, you a window shopper. Research took me, it took me to government schemes. I can stand here and tell you, go away and research. Off you go, YouTube done. But you know what? I like you. I like you very much. And I think you kind of like me too. So I'm going to give you three of these schemes out there. Scheme number one is one of the help to buy schemes. And it's the equity loan scheme. It helps first-time buyers and existing buyers 
who want to buy newly built houses, you can borrow 20% of the purchase price and the first five years is interest free as long as you've got 5% deposit. The second one is another type of help to buy scheme called shared ownership. And with this scheme, you buy a share of a home from a landlord, it might be a council, and then you rent the part that you do not own. You need a mortgage to pay for your share. If you own three quarters of the property, then one quarter is the part that you rent. And later date, you can choose to actually own 100% of the property. So it's, it's a step towards home ownership. If you're a first time buyer and you don't have a very big deposit down, only 5% is the requirement and that can help you get on the property ladder. The third one is the right to buy scheme. The right to buy scheme is when the tenant of a local council has been renting for about three years, then you can start to acquire the property you live in. The three years you need to have been renting from the local council do not have to be consecutive years. Okay, so you could have lived in a council property for one year, moved out into maybe private sector, and then you came back into a council property. So all those years you've lived in council property just need to accumulate and add up to three years minimum to be eligible for the right to buy scheme. The right to buy scheme, you get a discount. So you need to have been paying rent and that accumulates into a discount. Could be a fat discount. You've got parents, aunties, random neighbors who live in a council property and they've been paying rent for so many years they have the right to buy do your research educate your people because they are living in a property paying rent where that property could be theirs and that rent could be going towards ownership of that property the council is not going to wake up one day and be like knock knock maji you need to apply because you are eligible they're not going to do that the system is not set up for us to succeed there are things there there are in the small prints so baby girl do your research baby boy do your research because you could be a homeowner and you don't know it yet your mom could be a homeowner and she doesn't know it yet i'm not some financial expert but i did my research to know all of this so i'm telling you there are eligibility criteria for every single one of these schemes or find out which one suits you best. In my situation, the right to buy scheme was the best option for me because when I saw it, something went ding, 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 ding. The right to buy scheme is there for you, honey. My eyebrows just went. I don't know if my eyebrows raised there, but you know what I mean. When life gives you lemon, you gotta make some lemonade. Life gave me a council property, so I went into home ownership. Look at that. For being me, I wanted more discount. I did some reading and with the right to buy scheme, the longer you have lived in a property and paid rent, the more discount you are entitled to. So whilst I was still a student, I thought, you know what, I'm not going to buy that property straight away. I'm going to wait for more years so I can have more discount and a larger fat sum of money from the council. And I had time to save more. Not just a funny girl, I got brains too. Fast track uni is done, I'll guarantee the career job really quickly after uni. If you want to know more about that, maybe comments, comments. I got my property valuated. This was a property in inner London and was valuated at £250,000. The council came to survey the property and they told me I was eligible to how much discount? £100,000. Did you hear that? £100,000. Do I need to come closer? £100,000. Yes, that means that £250,000 property was being sold to me for £150,000. I had saved 13% of the asking price. Ekria, me, the girl born in Ghana, eh? Born in Koforidia, Koforidia flowers. Minye, me na minye, me better die. Hey, go me, go me, 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 go me. For those of you who don't know the maths, and some people, you are so nosy. You want to know that 13% I have saved. 30% of £150, that's £20,000. That's for all I had saved. Because I knew I had more years to go, I used my money for a couple of things along the way. I can't say I've always been sensible, you know. But I was cautious. I bought a Corsa. Then I bought a mini convertible. Because I like to show sometimes. So sure, you have to do guy, you know. You have to show them you are a guy. I'm a guy. Enough about buying cars. If you want to know my taste in cars, maybe that's another video for you. Just let me know if you are that interested and you like Koponsa. Back to the root of home ownership. 
After I started processing through a mortgage broker, it usually helps you find a mortgage lender, which is usually the bank. What I found out was that with the right to buy scheme, in some cases you don't even need a deposit. All these years of me working and working and working and working and saving and working and working and saving, when you apply on paper, it says the house is £250,000, but you only need a mortgage of, let's say, £130 in my case. So that means that £100,000 discount the council gave me is a bit of a deposit because you are not borrowing the full amount of the property. Do your research. You heard it here first because you could be owning that property with no deposit. You really like that. Subscribe. However, in my case, I still went ahead and added a deposit. The more deposit you put down, it means you borrow less from your mortgage lender, which means your monthly payments could be less. In normal English, I was paying less money every month, but I owned the property than I was paying when I was renting from the council. It's a win-win situation. Owning a property requires a lot more than a deposit. Stamp duty. This is the government tax on the property. You will need to pay legal fees, so you need a solicitor to represent you. Unfortunately, not all of us are lawyers here. Make sure you network. And I'm not saying TRE network and EE network and Vodafone network. No, 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 sister. Yeah, let me tell you. It means that friend next to you right now could be a lawyer one day and you will need their services for free. Me, I know I like a freebie. Let me know if you want to know more about that mortgage process as well because I can do another video for you, if I may, as long as you subscribe. All that in place, just remember all those years I made sure I had a good credit score. Your credit is so important. If your credit is poor, If you want a video on how to build your credit score, that's another situation for another time. Let's move on. I officially became a homeowner at the age of 25 because the process takes quite some time. It's not just overnight. You apply and you get it. It takes a while. But at the age of 25, I had the keys in my hand to my own property. If I wanted to remortgage, that £100,000 the council gave me before is now mine. Guess what? I can just take that money out of the property and go use it for deposit somewhere else or a business or something the world is my oyster so when you have a property it can only generate you more money because money makes you money i like that it can only get better one of my mottos is that i always aspire to inspire because at the end of the day when i'm at the top i want to look to my left and i want to see you okay so don't be down there let me see you to the left or to the right. Who knows? I might just see you up there and I might do my thing to get to you. Before you go, don't forget, add me on Instagram at Ekria Dimples, on Twitter at Ekria Dimples, and again on this YouTube channel, Ekria Dimples. Those in my comment section, I see you too. Kiss from this dimple. Kiss from this dimple. Ekria Dimples is signing.